The Jack Benny Program. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. <laughs> Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. L-S-M-F-T. 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 Remember, year in, year out, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. Independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers and warehousemen, men who spend their lives buying, selling, and handling tobacco can see just who buys what tobacco. And year after year, at auction after auction, they can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Remember, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, and fine tobacco means real deep-down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. American. The Lucky Strike Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Bill Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, people often wonder what a comedian does after he finishes his radio program. Well, let's go back to last Sunday afternoon. The Jack Benny program is over, and Jack and Mary are leaving the studio. Gee, Mary, I liked the show we did tonight, didn't you? Yeah. Wasn't that a terrific mystery sketch I did? The Fiddler. Gee. I am the Fiddler. I influence the lives of innocent people. I make them steal, hate. And even murder. Jack, put away that knife. The program's over. I'm just cleaning my fingernails. I anyway, I thought it was a wonderful sketch. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I'll never forget the look on your face when you opened the door where you thought the murderer was and found the quartet instead. Oh, yes, them. You know, Mary, those guys are driving me nuts. I wish there was some way I could get rid of them. If I could just... Say, I've got it. Oh, no, Jack. Where would you hide the body? I wasn't thinking of that. Anyway, I've got to figure out some way. Jack, let's stop in the drugstore for a snack. Well, look, Mary, it's only 5 o'clock. If you're waiting till later, I'll take you out and buy you a full course dinner. I'm no gambler. I'll take a sandwich now. <laughs> all right, all right. Come on. Here, two seats, Jack. Oh, yeah. What are you going to have, Mary? Oh, I don't know. Oh, here's something that looks good. A Dunker Special. A Dunker Special? What's that? Coffee, donuts, and a rubber glove, 15 cents. <laughs> nah, I don't get that. I had it last time. The glove had a hole in it. <laughs> what are you going to have? Gee, I don't know. A waiter. Waiter. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, him again. Now, let's see. Uh, uh, waiter, I'll have a chiss sweet Sam. <laughs> well, uh, I still have a chiss sweet Sam. Uh, waiter. Oh, uh, I'll have a Swiss cheese Sam. <laughs> One Swiss cheese sandwich. One Swiss cheese. Surely only. <laughs> well, I see Mr. Kitzel is still working here. Have you made up your mind yet, muscle bound? <laughs> yes, uh, I'll have a chocolate malted milk. One chocolate malted milk. Put an egg in it. Wait a minute. I don't want an egg in it. Have you looked in the mirror lately? <laughs> All right, give me a malted milk with an egg in it. Fried or scrambled? <laughs> Look, I want a malted milk with an egg in it. Just a plain raw egg. All right. One malted milk for a barbarian. <laughs> Look, waiter, why is it you always... Oh, Jack, let it go. You know you always antagonize him. I do not. You do, too. <laughs> 
Uh, you know, Mary, I'm never going to come in here again if that waiter doesn't stop with hello, all Hello, Mr. That... Benny. Can I sit here with you and Miss Livingston? Oh, hello, Dennis. I thought you went home. I came in for a sandwich first. And you know what? I just weighed myself. Oh. I weigh 140 pounds, stripped. <laughs> stripped? Yeah, I took the weighing machine into the phone booth. <laughs> Dennis. And when I put in a penny, a little card came out. What did it say, kid? It said, put on your pants. The lady wants to use the phone. <laughs> oh, stop being silly. Huh? Uh, here's your sandwich, miss. Thank you. And here's yours. <coughs> hey, wait a minute. I ordered a all of milk. This is an ice cream soda. That's not ice cream. That's an egg. <laughs> well, at least you could have broken it. I should break an egg? If I could break an egg, I'd punch you right in the nose. <laughs> Well, let me tell you... Oh, Jack, Jack, sit down. Everybody's looking at you. Well, all right, but I don't want this mall of milk. I'm going to have a cup of coffee, and I don't want this guy waiting on me. Oh, Mr. Kitzel. Mr. Kitzel. Just stop checking, please. I'm reading that new book, The Herring and I. <laughs> well, come here a minute, will you? Yes, sir. Mr. Kitzel, I always have trouble with this waiter. Will you please take care of me? What pleasure? What will you have? A cup of coffee. Thank you, thank you, or thank <laughs> Just plain coffee. In a jiffy. Thank you. Well, hello, everybody. Well, down. Sit down. Have a sandwich or something. Oh, no, thanks, Jack. I just dropped in to weigh myself. Oh. Is that the little card you got out of the scale, Don? Yes. Let me see it. Oh, no, oh, no, Oh, come on. Let me see it. Oh, okay. Here. Say, Don. <laughs> you... What are you laughing at, Mary? <laughs> What's, what's the weight on the card, Mary? It doesn't give any weight. It just says, get off, you're hurting me. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. Say, Don, as long as you're here, I want to talk to you about that quartet. Now, I'm not Well, going... well, if it ain't that old gang of mine. Hello, Phil. <laughs> Hey, Phil, how'd your show go today? Dynamite, Jackson, dynamite. And say, you know that gag you called up and gave me yesterday? Yeah, yeah. It laid there. <laughs> but I didn't need it. My charm and personality made it roll, Jackson, it rolled. Hmm. Hey, waiter. Uh, what'll it be? Give me a Phil Harris special. Okay. One ham omelet, put a wave in it. <laughs> That's a good one, huh? Uh, want anything to drink with it, Mr. Harris? Nothing to drink. I'm on the wagon. <coughs> Phil, he means coffee, tea, or milk. Oh, waiter, I'll have a cup of tea, please. And do you want cream or lemon with it? Gee, that sounds good. Give me the cream and lemon and never mind the tea. <laughs> Dennis, grow up, will you? Jack, I'm through with my sandwich. Okay. Come on, Mary, I'll walk you home. So long, fellas. Hey, Jackson, what about the check? You and Dennis can split it. You've both got shows of your own now. Come on, Mary. <laughs> I do without these fog lights on my knees. <laughs> Hello, Rochester. Hello, boss. You're home a little later than usual. Yes, yes. You see, uh, Miss Livingston felt hungry, so I took her to the Macombo. Did you say Macombo, boss? Yes. And on our way home, we stopped off for a few dances at Ciro's. Ciro's? Yes. And then I thought as long as I took her to the Macombo and Ciro's, it would be nice. Boss, you're in the house now and the neighbors can't hear you. How are things at the drugstore? <laughs> huh? Rochester, how did you know that I was at the drugstore? Mr. Billy, 
You can fool some of the neighbors all of the time and all of the neighbors some of the time, but I ain't a neighbor. I live here. <laughs> oh, I've been to Ciro's and you know it. Well, it's been a long day, Rochester. I think I'll go up to bed. Just a minute, I'll strap on my Indian papoose bag. You don't have to carry me. I can walk upstairs myself. Now, make my bed, will you please? Yes, sir. I'm going in the library and get a book. Oh, hello, Polly. Hello, hello. <laughs> Did Polly hear Daddy on his program today? Hello again. Hello again. Oh, then you did hear the show. Come on now, Polly. What else did you hear on my program? Come on. Come on. Now, come on. What else did you hear? Have an auction. Turn up greens. That's right. That's right. Keep on. Come on, Polly. Come on. Keep going. And that's what I like about. About what? Come on, Polly. About what? And that's what I like about. That's what I like about. Oh, never mind. I'll... I'll teach you tomorrow. Now, let's see. What book do I want here? This one will do. The South. <laughs> That's right, Polly. That's it. Now, say the whole thing. That's what I like about. Come on, Polly. Say the whole thing. That's what I like about. That's what I like about the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 the whole thing. Well, I'm going to bed. Good night, Polly. I don't know. I don't know what's the matter with that bird. She can't keep her mind on things. Every year at this time, she acts the same. Stays that way until the swallows come back to Capistrano. <laughs> oh, well, I guess if I had feathers, I'd understand. Your bed's all ready, boss. Here are your pajamas. Good, good. Why are you going to bed so early? It's not early. It's half past eight. <laughs> anyway, I'm always nervous and upset after the program on Sundays. That quartet that sings a commercial drives me crazy. But, boss, I think it's nice to have a music with a commercial. Rochester, all Wilson has to say is, L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. That's all he has to say, and people will walk down to the nearest store and buy Lucky Strike. I know, but if you do it with music, they'll dance down. <laughs> Rochester, I'm Jack Benny, not Arthur Murray. And I'm going to bed. Please turn out the light. Okay. Good night, boss. Good night. Oh, Rochester. Yes, boss? Blow out my jack-o'-lantern. It scares me. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Oh, gee. Certainly glad I went to bed early. I don't feel like reading either. Maybe I'll listen to the radio a little while. And that concludes another session of our very popular quiz program, Take It and Go Already. <laughs> And now, mm. ladies and gentlemen, the following is a spot announcement. <laughs> Thank you, spot. <laughs> what was that? And now, in answer to many requests, lovely Patricia Duvall will sing that beautiful ballad, I'll See You in My Dreams. Gee, I love that number. <laughs> Be something wrong with my radio. <laughs> Must be the radio. I <laughs> People requested that? <laughs> Nice quiet.
reports here. Oh. Why can't my quartet sing as good as that? doing in my bedroom? We just came out of your radio. We're the quartet called the Sportsmen. Say, you fellas are wonderful. Gee, I wish you were my quartet. We are. <laughs> you mean, you mean you're the same fellas who, who do my commercials? You are the guys. Well, let me ask you something. Why don't you sing for me like you did on that program I just heard? Because you antagonize us. I do not. You, you do, do too. too. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, you fellas. This is some trick. You're not the same guys who do my commercials. Oh, we're not, eh? L-S-L-S-M-F-T, la 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 You guys think you're so smart. Well, this is the last time I'm going to have trouble with you. Put down that gun. It's too late now. Take that. Tenors are hard to kill. <laughs> well, well, I guess that'll hold you for a while. Now, come on, you guys. Come on, get out of here. Get out of... Wait a minute. They're dead. I killed them. I killed them. But I didn't mean to. <laughs> Order in the court. Order in the court. In the court? What am I doing here? The next trial will be the case of Jack Benny versus the people of Anaheim, Azusa, and my darling Clementine. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What, what am I charged with? You are charged with killing your quartet. That's a crime? <laughs> yes, and not only murder, but the court attendant will read the following charges. On the night of September 30th, Jack Benny, willfully and with malice aforethought, did... You'll be sorry! I, I did all that? Yes, and anything you say will be used against you. But look... You better let your lawyer do all your talking. But... But I haven't got a lawyer. This is a fine how do you do. How do you do? <laughs> you, Dennis. Dennis, you're my lawyer. <laughs> Silly boy. <laughs> Dennis. Dennis, you... My lawyer. Certainly. Don't you remember? You hired me for $35 a week. But, but kid, I only hired you to sing on my radio program. Yes, but in the fine print of my contract, it says that I have to be your lawyer when I'm not mowing your lawn. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, I, I remember I hired you because you weighed 140 pounds, stripped. 
Everyone rise. Here comes his honor, the judge. What is this? I don't need any trial. When the judge hears my story, you'll know that I'm innocent. He has such a kind, intelligent face. Oh, judge? Yes. <laughs> oh. Are, are you the judge? Yes. And let's get on with the execution. <laughs> You mean trial. I know how it's going to end. <laughs> Judge, you mean I'm going to be... Dennis. Dennis, you're my lawyer. Say something. To each his own. <laughs> what? It's either that or plead guilty. Gee, I'm, I'm glad you thought of that. Hiya, Jackson. Phil, Phil, what are you doing here? I'm the district attorney, and I ain't going to rest until you're executed. Phil, you're the district attorney. You've got two shows now. <laughs> who, who appointed you district attorney? Petrello. <laughs> oh, but Phil. Phil, you're not a lawyer. You're a musician. I know you're a musician. Oh, trying to plead insanity, huh? <laughs> But I'm not. I'm not trying to plead insanity. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this trial to bring you a spot announcement. <laughs> Thank you, Fido. Fido? What happened to Spot? Oh, well. He was probably... He was probably just a summer replacement. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, I know I'll get out of this mess. I know I will. Sure you will, Jack. Don't worry. Don. Don, where'd you come from? Eastern Columbia, Broadway at night. What? I'm the big clock. That clock. <laughs> and now the prosecution calls its surprise witness, Miss Mary Livingston. Make room, Hello, Philzy. Hiya, Judge. Uh, Miss Livingston, please take your usual seat. No, Judge, I might spoil the crease in your pants. I better sit in the witness chair. Gee, and they're nylons, too. <laughs> and look, look at those fog lights on her knees with dimples on them. Miss Livingston, before you're allowed to testify, the bailiff will swear you in. Go ahead, Bay. Hey, Miss Livingston. <laughs> Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, with pickle in the middle and the mustard on top? No, with the mustard in the middle and the bananas in the refrigerator. Gee, is that the way they swear in witnesses today? Now, Miss Livingston, as the prosecuting attorney, I want to ask you, have you ever been out on a date with the defendant, Jack Benny? Yes, several times. Did Mr. Benny ever attempt to kiss you? Sure. Mr. Benny is a caveman type of lover. Caveman type of lover? Yes, one kiss and he caves in. Henry, <laughs> I, I do not. Now, Miss Livingston, concerning the alleged murder of this quartet, Objection do you... Objection overruled. But nobody objected. I know, and it was getting awfully dull. <laughs> Dennis. Dennis, the judge is against me. I'm afraid. I'm afraid, I tell you. Order in the court. The 497th day of the trial of Jack Benny is on. Gee, I'm so tired. Now, miss, you're a brand new witness. Please tell us all about yourself. I am a telephone operator. My name is Gertrude Gearshift. <laughs> I work at NBC. Wednesday is my night off, if you know what I mean. Now, when you work at NBC, you hear all the telephone conversations that come through, don't you? No, there are other switchboards. I'm on the first, Mabel's on the second, and Greenberg's on third. Greenberg? How did he get in here? Now, Miss Gearship, you asked to be brought here as a witness. Tell the court in your own words exactly what you said to me in my office this afternoon. I said, stop, you're smearing my lipstick. No, no. I said that too, but you wouldn't listen. Dennis. Dennis, I don't like the way the trial is going. 
I tell you, I'm worried. Now, Mr. Benny, will you please take the stand? Yes, sir. Mr. Benny, what is your occupation? I am the fiddle. <laughs> I play by night. I influence. Order in the court. The jury will now give their verdict. So fast? Foreman, have you reached a verdict? <laughs> Good. What is your decision? We find the defendant, Jack Benny, guilty of... Guilty of... Guilty of what? The whole thing. <laughs> but this is ridiculous. I'm innocent, I tell you. I never was responsible for anyone's death in my entire life. What about the gas man? <laughs> Rochester. Rochester, stand aside. Your Honor. Your Honor, please listen to me. Your Honor, I admit that I killed my quartet. But it was justifiable homicide. They were making me a nervous wreck. They were... They were driving me crazy. I was paying them $500 a week. Yeah. They never sang good for me. But they always sang beautifully on other programs. So pretty with such beautiful harmony. I remember because I... I heard him the night I killed him. I was lying in bed and I turned on my radio. to turn off the radio. Jack, we'll be back in just a minute. But first, here is my good friend, L.A. Speed Race. Remember this all-important fact. It takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Mr. John L. Pinnock, independent tobacco warehouseman of Reedsville, North Carolina, has operated tobacco warehouses for 28 years. He said, At all the auctions I've attended, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy tobacco that just can't be beat when it comes to smoking enjoyment. That's why for 28 years, I've been a Lucky Strike smoker. Year after year, at auction after auction, independent tobacco experts like Mr. Pinnock's can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco means real deep-down smoking enjoyment for you. L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. The famous tobacco auctioneers heard on tonight's programmer, Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. <laughs> and Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. At the third nine, all of the fifty nine, American. Dr. Risedale speaking for Lucky Strike, the cigarette of fine tobacco. <laughs> Gee, that was one of the silliest dreams I ever had. Oh, well. I'll get back to sleep again. Uh. Ah! On that Rochester, I told him to blow out my jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> this is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company. 